We need like James Dan segment. Yeah. Happy weekend, ugh. Hey guys, happy weekend. I keep forgetting to introduce myself in the beginning of my videos. So my name is Brianna. I am a third year, third grade teacher in North Carolina. And we are rocking out Hurricane Florence right now. I'm much farther away from the coast, so it hasn't really got here yet. It's been windy and rainy. Apparently we lost power last night. I don't know if you can tell, but the time is flashing over there. I should probably fix that. But I filmed a weekend vlog last week and I thought I would do it again and show you how I am prepping for the week ahead. Now this week, don't know what it's going to look like because the hurricane is coming tonight which is saturday and into tomorrow so we don't know what the damage is going to be like or how the power outage is going to be so that's going to affect my week ahead however i still want to prepare so the first thing i'm going to do today is grade my kids math tests that they took on wednesday now normally i like to grade tests right away but since it's still the beginning of the school year, I'm trying to stay awake when I get home and I'm still struggling with that. So I'm going to grade their math test right now and I'll show you a little bit about that and how I form intervention groups from that. So yes, I like to sit on my couch with a nice blanket while I am grading. So I have my answer key here. Normally we use Mastery Connect, which comes with bubble sheets that you scan onto the computer and it automatically grades the test. But we haven't started that yet for this year. So I don't like to cross out the ones the kids get wrong. I like to circle them. And of course the first one I graded is not looking too good. After I check the bubbles, and I circle the ones they missed, I go back into their test and make sure they just didn't bubble the wrong thing, especially in the beginning of the year because this is the first time that they've been doing bubbles. And then I come over to my notebook here and I just have this covering the student's name. But I write down the student's name and then it depends. Right now I was writing each number that this child got wrong and what she did so I know what to work on with her. Usually it's a similar mistake across the problems, but since this was our first test, it's gonna be all, all over. But this is just really going to help me understand my students as test takers and see how to help them. So this is just a generic bubble sheet that came from multiple use classroom resources. And it went all the way up to 50, but we only had 24 questions. And then in the test, so there's only 24 questions. We do get our test questions from SchoolNet. If I circle it on their bubble sheet, when I check it, I go in and I circle it in their test. That way they can see and see this child. And I worked with her on this and I reminded her. Well, she remembered, she was struggling to remember to borrow from her hundreds. But now, so I actually have to change what I wrote down. She did not double regroup. And I taught them the plus one minus one trick and she still didn't do it. And this one, if they don't have any work, I write it. And I just happened to miss this one because I make it a point to go through every single page with the student before I accept their test because I don't like to take them without work. That way, while they're taking a test in my classroom, I can get them into the habit of showing their work because on a state test, I'm not going to be able to remind them to show it. So then we had this back page, which wasn't bubble sheet. This test will be out of 40 points. So one point for each problem. I put the number right out of the number wrong and that's how I get their average. I have my pink Inkjoy pen. I love grading with these because they're super juicy. <laughs> and then I have a pile of stickers over here. I'm putting stickers on tests that are 80 or above 
And then my grade book is over here, which I write in pencil. So I always love when there are a lot of problem, <laughs> that sounded funny. I always love when there are a lot of problems on a test because this child missed 12, but she still has a 70 and 70 we consider proficient with the material. Um, obviously she'll need some intervention, but it's nothing that she doesn't know what she's doing. And word problems are so new and so fresh to these kids. So I'm just hoping that me going over one every day in a small group with them is going to really help them thrive with navigating through word problems. If you have no idea what I'm talking about in my weekly vlog, I will put it in the cards up here. What do you call it? Watch it towards the end. I talk about how I'm running centers in my classroom this year and I specifically talk about word problems. This is a prime example of why it's so important to not just go off of bubble sheets, especially when they're new to kids. This child, number 17, he got the right answer. He just bubbled it wrong, especially since we just started using bubble sheets. I'm going to give the student's full credit. I'm definitely going to mention it to him that he did make his mistake and this is how I correct it. So that way when he gets his test back with his parents, they can even talk about it. Last year in fourth grade, I mean, they were used to bubble sheets from third. So during third and fourth quarter is when I stopped counting it as correct because their bubbles by then, they know, they know to check those bubbles. I might stop halfway through the year again in third or maybe not until fourth quarter because it is so fresh and new to them. So this is a prime example of a student who <laughs> struggled with word problems because his most problem on my notebook that I wrote down was that he mis mis mistook subtraction word problems for addition. But on the back page, he got all of the algorithm one, nope, not that one. He got all of the algorithm correct. So he knows how to add and subtract. He just needs help with the word problems. And he missed eight problems. And normally on a test I gave last year, like we did not, we gave like 25 problems on every test. That would have been a 60 something missing eight problems on a really long test, he has an 80, which is fantastic. He deserves that. So question for you guys. I don't always have the answers. What do you do for children that just don't care? And this child is one of those special cases where he is so smart and he literally, like that's me writing that. He did not show work for any problem. He knows how to do this stuff because look, here's the algorithm. He got it all right. He made a silly mistake here. For this part, I knew he was just done and didn't want to continue. So I picked a few for him to do and I totally, totally, totally should have done that throughout the whole test, but he went through his test and I gave it back to him and I said, you have to show your work. But clearly he didn't still. What do you guys do? I mean, there is a way I can get him a 504, which is like a, it's like an IEP, an individual education plan where he can have modified assignments because he is ADHD and he's not medicated. So I could, if the parents are on board, get him a 504 to get him modified assignments. That way he does not rush through like this just because there's so much work in front of him. I mean, that's the big thing. Modified assignments is what I want for him. Oh gosh. Like towards the end, he was just bubbling A for all of them. If you have any tips, please let me know because he is so smart and so capable of doing this. So please, please help me out. Okay, so my page of notes for each student after I graded their test, I have divided them into four different 
small groups. I didn't want to get too close since their names are on there, but I have some extra things besides each. So what my small groups are going to focus on are subtraction, subtraction regrouping, word problems, adding three numbers, and how to check work. Because uh, there was a lot of problems with subtraction regrouping. Either my kids forgot to regroup with their zeros at all. They just thought they could do zero minus five, which I'm seeing a lot of these kids can't think about that, which is weird because conceptually you do that from first grade on. And some of my kids are mi mixing addition strategies with subtraction. So when they go to regroup, instead of changing like a four to a 14, they like put plus one. They are like adding with subtraction. It's the strangest thing. So I have to fix that. But just those basic skills. That's where I'm going to start with my small groups. And then word problems, basically, that's something I'm just going to continue to focus on throughout the year. Like I said, I'm doing it in centers. So that's an easy small group that I could fit into what I'm already doing in class. So not take away from what I'm already doing. Um, but I just had a lot of kids who saw subtraction keywords. So they would subtract, but it was actually an addition problem because we talked about how it is nice that you can look for words to help you. However, don't let them trick you. So we'll still have to work with a lot of those. And then three of my kids just struggled with an addition problem that had three numbers. They either added them all at once or added two and went to add the other two, but use the same number again. Um, so just silly mistakes. So I just want to help them organize their work there. And then there was a problem that said like, how do you check 24 minus six equals 12 or 18? 24 minus six equals 18. How could you check your work? And it gave different equations and they picked something that totally didn't have to do with the problem. So I'm just going to help them work through that. But those are the main things. It's really just the subtraction regrouping, which is probably a constant everywhere, and the word problems, which is fine because that's going to happen. But overall, my kids did pretty well for their first big math test. I want to look at this. I had two 100s. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, six a's i had one two three four five six b's and four c's and then three kids that are below proficient so that's not bad at all especially for the first test and one of those students may consistently be below proficient because the child is ec in math so they just struggle with numbers. So that one might always be there. The other one, I have to figure out what's going on with him because he's one of those who participates in class all the time and stays on track and knows what we're doing. And then it comes to independent work and that's where he struggles. Um, and then the third one was the test that I showed you of the student who is so, 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 so smart and just is not putting the effort in. So. Those are my three low babies that I'm, that are going to be definitely on my radar so I could help them the best that I can. Yeah. So update on the hurricane. We just got flash flood, flood warnings on our phones and you can hear it's coming down, but it just looks like normal rain right now. The wind is not really doing anything. Yeah, it's staring at a tree, but that's because I don't really want to show you like exactly where I live <laughs> but it's it's coming down now we're still like if you look at the map we're still on the outskirts of the hurricane itself Alright guys, it's here. The hurricane has finally made it. 
is really coming down. Okay, so I've cut all of the pieces out and I'm really, really excited with how it came out. As you can see, I made these rotation little pieces, rotation one, rotation two, rotation three, rotation four. And the colors signify the groups. I think what I might do on the colors is write my students' names who are in that group. I don't know how often I'm going to change groups. Last year, I think I did it based on every test. So that might be something I do. We have four to five tests tests every quarter. But as you can see, it goes Miss Pavensky, Independent, Math the Room, Technology. It's the same pattern. It's just I start with my low babies and I end with my high babies. And I like having the independent practice after meeting with me because I will be reviewing that skill that we just learned in class. So I think this setup is going to be perfect. This is why I like to have four groups. It's just so much easier with rotations. And I'm just going to, I don't know if I'll staple it, tape it, how I'll put it on the wall because I don't know if I'll need to change these colors out because I have six colors just in case something changes or if I want a different color to change it up, I don't know. And then these are obviously going to be Velcroed because that is going to be something that does change from day to day. So like our Monday, Wednesday will look like this. The order they do things will not change, but then Tuesday, Thursday, I'm going to swap out math the room and technology with math facts and game and this is going to be once i teach the kids these i haven't taught them those centers yet but they do know all of these when i incorporate game and math facts i will probably do math facts on the math the room day because this is basically like word problems around the room so that's pretty heavy so I think it would be easier to do math the room and math facts and then game and technology, I think. Or I'll switch it up, I'll see what works best. But that's my plan. So this is what is going to go up on my board and I really, really like how it turned out. I'm so excited because I talked in my previous vlog about how I get ideas from so many places and even though people have set up their centers just like this before, I feel like this design and the colors being big squares and just how I put it together is completely my own. I didn't get, I got inspired by pieces of things, but it's not like I completely copied someone's thing. Which, by the way, it is a new day, so I showered and got a little bit more presentable. But by the way, I don't feel bad anymore. I'm going to need to change my battery. I don't feel bad anymore because Michelle, in her last vlog, talked about buying a product and them not having what she needed. So she copied the design and just made her own for those two days. So I no longer feel bad copying her labels and making my own. So everyone who was hating on me for that she said it's okay she did it herself that's all another thing i quickly wanted to say was i did laminate this cardstock with scotch laminating pouches i know for a while i was using a different brand but i guess they caught on to everyone was buying their product and their price went up so whoever graciously sent me those laminating pouches they are being put to good use because the most recent ones i purchased because when the other ones went up i'm like oh i'll try a different cheap one. Oh my gosh i'm sorry to this company but your product is not good so do not buy these this is virgo crystal clear it is the three millimeter, however, I don't know if I've showed you in my videos, but it has been peeling. Like the Velcro does not, I mean the Velcro. The laminating pouches does not stick together and heat and melt together and stay. It peels so easily. If you 
have a piece of tape on the back and you're taping it to something and then you need to pick it up and move it once you pick it up that force from the tape just peels the laminating pouch so I haven't really been using these I'm going to use them for things that won't be handled often and just things that I want a little bit of protection on but that's my thought on these so they are super cheap they do laminate but they peel really easily and I actually laminated some cards that I gave to my kids for a one-time use kind of deal while my kids bent them if they bent other laminating it would just got a little crease when they bend these they peel so just throwing that out there if there's a way to fix that or if you found a good use for these or just if maybe you use the five millimeter setting on your laminator I don't know let me know about this brand so I've decided to do something a little bit different this week and I don't usually use my planner for this I've just been using the calendar portion to fill out all my important dates but this is my planner from personal planner and you completely personalize everything that's in it you can have lines here they can be different colors you don't have to line have lines there completely personalize everything at the, at the bottom I've talked about this before and I don't usually use this part because I use plan book now since the school year started I've been going through my plans day by day I have all my plans as a team we put them all together and typically I just look at Monday over the weekend and see how my whole day is going to play out well what I noticed especially with this past math test is I'm not paying attention to my goal and fitting everything in so Miss Calls Campers Maylene my great great friend she made it so clear and I don't know why I didn't think of this before look at your plans for one subject for the entire week so now this whole little blurb here that I have about math for each day sums up what I'm doing in each day and also since we missed Friday we've had to bump a few things and move a few things around so this actually ended up being a little bit different than what's on here because now in front of me I see the basic pieces that are getting done each day and where I can shift things around and make it work for my students since we plan as a grade level everybody's lessons are going to look different they don't have to be exactly what is in the plans so I've looked at math now I'm going to go through and look at reading and yes I'm wearing a rain jacket because I'm about to go to the store it's been raining but the wind's not strong and if we have school tomorrow I need lunch so <laughs> that's that but then I'm gonna go through and look at ELA social studies and writing we haven't started science yet because we do a unit of social studies a unit of science a unit of social studies a unit of science science so that's what's going on with that with that but thank you Maylene you've made my life so much easier and now I'm going to know where my end goal is for the week for every subject. This just makes so much sense. <laughs> so here is my spread for the week. There's only three days a week where we have all subjects because Wednesday and Friday is when we have our, our enrichments. So the only thing I haven't added in here was or is intervention time, which happens every day except Friday. Down at the bottom here where the lines change, I added my math centers. So my independent practice is the worksheet for every day. So we already have that planned out. So I don't have to do prep for that. Technology is math I ready. I also don't have to do prep for that. My kids know all about that. Math the room, MBT2. I have those cards up and my kids practiced this the week before already. They've already done these problems, but I think what I'm going to do is put more up and have them go back and correct the ones that they missed because I already looked through them. What I need to figure out is how I'm going to pass that back out to them because I just feel like if I pass it all out at once, the worksheet, the map, the room, recording sheet that's just going to be too much if they don't get to either of those until their last two rotations so i um, thinking I'm going to put it like in their top drawers at their tables but that's something that I will have to decide for tomorrow 
So that's already set up around the room. Now normally I would do math the room one day. Something would replace that on Tuesday, like math facts. And then Wednesday they would come back to it. So that would give me a whole day in between to look over them. And when they come back to it, that's when they would correct. So I think what I'm gonna do is have them continue working and correct. A lot of them didn't even get to many of them. And then from there on Tuesday, I haven't thought that far ahead yet. <laughs> so that's something I will have to think about. And then I will have to prep the word problems for my table. Now, I already have two word problems printed and cut out to put into notebooks because I'd like to have them glue it in their notebooks and then use the whole page to work through it. I think I might just use those and I could probably add in there, okay, so what if this said about how many because we are doing rounding this week. So I think that's what I'm going to do since I already have two prepped. So then I would just have to prep two more since we don't do centers on Friday because that's our short day. And then that's it for centers. I did, if you watched my vlogs over the summer, I prepped pocket full of primary Michelle's writing menus, monthly writing prompts for the year. And I put each month on a different color cardstock and laminated them and I put them in the drawer in my classroom. Well, I'm thinking now that that wasn't very practical because I'm going to have multiple students who want to use that at a time. So to start introducing writing on their own, because eventually I'm going to move their free write time into my, our ELA block for our rotations, I'm going to print them each out a menu for the month of September and we're going to slide it into a let's see one of these because I have so many of these from my first year of teaching because it was on the supply list for some reason so we're going to slide the menus into these and they're going to keep them in their writing binders and then at the end of the month we will swap them out and I have to look up a three branches of government anchor chart and I have to write down that I need to remember to get construction paper for everybody. So I'm just gonna keep going through this and write down on the bottom here all this extra space, what I need to prep or print or whatever. Okay, so game changer. My printer just printed front to back. I just clicked two-sided two -sided when I was printing it out and I didn't know that it had that feature. This is the HP 55740, ignore the dust. I do have instant ink, my code is always down below. Amazing. And I do have, yeah, I have new ink sitting over there and it's still printing perfectly. So that's how in advance they send you new ink, which is awesome. So Michelle does have this editable now on her TPT store but I'm not too worried about it since it's the first time I'm introducing it. I think you can change what's in the prompts and you can change the word bank. I like that you can change the word bank because, thank you computer, because I don't do vocabulary or uh, spelling words with my kids yet. It's just third grade year. We it's hard to fit everything in. I really want to do vocabulary at least because they are getting phonics instruction on iReady. So then I can add their vocabulary words to their word bank. But I think I'm gonna do flocabulary. That's how I'm going to transition from math to reading. I'm just going to play a flocabulary song for the week. I may use those words as one of my centers in reading when I get those up and running, but I can add them to writing is my point. And it's just good to have that exposure to it. So I am planning on bringing this to school and making copies for each of my students. So to prep for that, I'm going to add a sticky note to it. That way it just makes my life easier. With that, I am adding in some page protectors to take to school with me. I had this at school with me last year. All my page protectors are in the bottom. I have, I don't even know, random construction paper and notebooks in there, circus paper and regular printer paper. 
other construction. Oh yes, I've I need these. Perfect construction paper and like what? I don't even know. Printer paper and notebook paper. See, this was just my paper organizer last year, but I print most things from home. So I like having that in my little office space, but I'm so glad I just found these because with my centers that I was showing you earlier, I want to take a sticker and put it on my kid's name tag to show them what group they are a part of. These I got from Amazon, garagesalepup.com, free templates. Oh, that's cool. So you can put this in the printer and print on these, but I bought these last year for something, I don't remember. Oh, to put a sticker on my clipboards. That is what those are for. I'm so glad I just opened that drawer. I used the very bottom to make a little to-do list for tomorrow. I have three different anchor charts I need to make. I kind of do the base, it depends what anchor chart it is. Like my math ones, if it's Steps. I might sometimes write them out together, but I kind of set it up to be ready to be written on. So like the social studies one, I'm going to make a tree to be ready to be written on. And the capital letter one, I'm going to just set up like boxes and outlines and things so I can fill it out with the students. And I get all of those ideas. I just look them up on Google and Pinterest things come up and teachers pay teachers things come up and just pictures and all that stuff make copies which is just the September writing prompts is the only copy I have to make as of right now then I have to get brown and green construction paper for the entire grade level because that was supposed to be done before Thursday and we forgot with all the hurricane drama so I'll have to do that that's for our three branches of government little activity for the students project for them to put together along with that i think this came up on my facebook the other day which is so random but clearly i search teacher things a lot this is from the thinkerbuilder.com and if you sign up for his newsletter you get this for free and i just thought this was a really fun little brochure to give to parents when i have conferences because they always ask for things they can do at home. So I'm really glad that I came across this because this is one thing I'm going to give them and then I have a bunch of links in a symbol for them to use different websites at home as well. So right now I need to make groups for centers and then I need to figure out what intervention groups I'm going to be doing tomorrow and i will basically be set i feel so much more prepared with laying my week out like this and i love that i can use the aspect of writing things down to just get my thoughts together using my plans and just mapping out the week in a very simple manner and making use of my planner so i don't even know if i just spoke english and if any of those sentences or words went together but it made sense in my head thank you again maylene that just might have saved my life for the rest of the year because i feel like a very prepared teacher for the week i know what's coming and yeah We got a river starting. And it's coming up on our balcony too. It's really coming down. And my boyfriend and I have this little screen magnetic door which we love because we've just had it open the past few days with the wind blowing in and just listening to the storm it's a pretty neat little contraption i either got it on groupon or amazon but they have them you know wherever and it's just 
pinned to the wall. It looks pretty ugly when the French door is closed, you know, because that's a nice door there, but I mean, we're in an apartment and it opens outward, so you can't add another door. So it is almost seven o'clock and we did just get news that we have a delay tomorrow with the option to close. So the worst of the storm is coming now which kind of stinks because it, it's like we don't know how it's going to affect us. And the way it works in North Carolina is if one part of the county is affected, the whole county has to close, which is weird to me because I come from New Jersey where my town had one school system and everybody who lived in my town, there was multiple elementary schools, but there was one intermediate, one middle, and one high. We all came together in those grades. It was based on our school, our town. If there was a problem in our town, it would close. In North Carolina, it's based on counties. So if something happens in near a school, a school loses power 30 minutes away from my school, they still have to close all schools. Or if there's trees down, buses can't get through it more likely than just losing power. They have to close all the schools. So if you're on the edge of the county, it's like, that didn't affect me at all. But you know, the school across the county from me changes our plans. Or if you're in the middle, it kind of makes more sense because you're surrounded by everything. But I'm fully planned and we're going to have to bump lessons again because with a delay, we will probably just get to math and reading. It is nice though, because I'll have a partial work day because I can go in and at my regular time and get all my stuff done. And I really want to organize my cabinets. With that being said, I just realized I haven't made my newsletter for this week, so I'm going to go do that now. All right, so it's a lot later. My newsletter is complete. And one more thing I would like to do tonight is get some subtraction problems on like a half sheet of paper for my intervention groups tomorrow. Those are planned in my plan book, how I'm going to separate kids, skills I want to work on. Since it's just subtraction, I mean, I may teach them the number line trick. I am going to start back to basics with base 10 blocks and do a couple with those, have them draw them and see if that helps. I know there's a few of them that it will just take a couple times to just reinforce the steps, but others I need to give them a new strategy because the algorithm is not cutting it and drawing base 10 blocks is not cutting it. So we'll have to see how it goes. I also don't even know if I'll be able to pull those groups tomorrow because with the delay, I'll want to get in writing. I'll have to play around with my schedule. We'll see how it goes. What else did I want to say? Oh, in my newsletter, I talked about starting centers and it gave a little blurb to my parents about them. So I'm really hoping that that pushes me to get to them and really go through with them this week. That's one thing I do like about having my own classroom. In fourth grade, we all made the same newsletter since we switched classes, it wasn't very personalized. So now I can add like a little blurb from myself. It's like a letter that, a weekly letter that I write to my parents. Um, so I like that I can throw things in there like that. And that's pretty much it. I'm looking forward to my morning time tomorrow where I can get all my anchor charts done and I don't have to rush. Thank you guys so much for joining me this weekend. Let me know down below if you are enjoying these two videos a week videos. <laughs> Remember that I post my weekend vlogs every Wednesday morning and I post my weekly teacher vlogs every Saturday. If there's anything that you have questions about or want to see from me, I love sharing. That's what I'm here for. I love collaborating. I love receiving ideas from you guys and sharing the things that I've found and how I bring everything together. So just let me know and I will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, hit that notification bell so you are notified when I post a new video and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to click around on the screen to see any uh, of my previous videos that may pop up. Bye. James Dan just really wants his own like speaking part in my All videos. My whole section.
What do you videos? Se you know, in like a whole section. We need like James Dan segment. Yeah. And also, I've clarified on my Instagram. What is your name? James Dan. It's not James Sam. No. <laughs> it's a family name, so he's cool and southern, and I like it. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm.